I'm Jammer, and welcome back to another Animal Crossing New Horizons video. There's no denying that Animal Crossing is just a fantastic game, but there are a lot of little aspects and quality of life things that could definitely update to the game to really enhance the experience and just make it overall easier to play. I know you know what I'm talking about, those little annoyances where it's like, oh, if they only just fix this just one little thing, it would make X action a lot easier to complete. So that's what we're going to go through today, a list of like smaller updates or quality of life features they could update to the game. But before we get started, if you haven't already, perhaps consider subscribing. It's free, you can always change your mind later, and you can always expect tons more of Animal Crossing New Horizons content. So thanks for listening to that. Without further ado, let's get started. It wouldn't be a quality of life update video if we didn't start with talking about crafting. How is bulk crafting not a thing? When trying to craft multiple of the same item, it's a lot of button mashing, especially when it comes to crafting fishing bait, because typically, you know, you're gonna make a large amount of fishing bait. First of all, fishing bait isn't available to purchase in Nook's Cranny, which that could be an update. But since right now, the only way to get it is through crafting, it's gonna take a lot of button mashing to get your stacks upon stacks of the fishing bait you're gonna wanna use. A simple update would be just to select how many of an item you want to craft. And while we're on the topic of crafting, you should be able to use your materials that are in your home storage when crafting inside your home. I can't tell you how often I'm always running back to my house to grab materials that I want to craft with. But then once I'm in my house, I have to sort through my inventory in the storage, grab what I need, jump back, start crafting, and then realize, oh wait, I only have enough for three stalls. Maybe I need to make five or however many I need to make. So I have to go back in my storage, grab the iron ore or whatever I forgot. It's such a back and forth tedious process and I think it would make a lot of sense to be able to access your home storage when you're at least when you're crafting in your home. But speaking of crafting, let's talk about tools. I know a lot of people take issue with the breakable tools thing, but I understand the gameplay loop. It's like to encourage you to keep making new tools, but it is kind of tedious. I do get that. I think at, at the very least they should make the golden tools unbreakable. Because all things considered, the gold tools are technically the best type of tool for each tool there is. And it takes a lot of work to unlock the recipe to make the gold tools. And gold ore is a very expensive material to use. So if you're breaking through multiple golden watering cans, you're gonna have to use a gold ore every single time you wanna make a new one. Luckily, they do have a lot of durability, but it still is kind of annoying the fact that gold tools can even break at all. So let's talk Nook Phone a little bit. After you purchase 100 items from Nook Shopping, you can actually, you know, you get the app on your phone. So then you can just, you can check your catalog whenever you want and buy things right on the fly. Maybe you're running around your town and you realize, oh my gosh, I need another garden lamp right here. Boom, you just pull it out, you buy it, you're good to go. I mean, one thing that's already annoying right off the bat is the fact that you're only limited to five items per day. I mean, I maybe understand why they want to limit you so you don't just like buy tons and tons of stuff and your mailbox gets overflowed. But like, at the same time, it's like, come on, why do you have to limit us to five? Maybe at least bump it up to like 10 or something. But ever since unlocking the Nook Shopping on my phone, I have less and less of a reason to even access the ABD. And since you can already Nook Shop from your phone, why couldn't you do the other functions of the ABD? It'd be really nice to be able to redeem Nook Miles from your phone because a lot of those items anyways are stuff that mail into your house the next day. So you can order your street lamps, your park clocks, and whatever you want on the go as well. And speaking of ABD, it's really annoying to have to run back into Reticent Services every time I run out of bells. I don't see them going like the full blown route of a debit card. I know that's not unprecedented to the series because in City Folk there was the shopping card that you could bring to the city so then you could actually make bigger purchases because a lot of things were, you know, more expensive than the amount of bells you could hold in your pockets. And while that's still true in this game, I still understand and I'm okay with the fact that you have to carry on cash everywhere, but at least let me access the ATM in more than one place than just resident services. In previous games, whenever you would save a certain amount into your bank account, you get little furniture item rewards like a piggy bank, post office themed tissue box, and the final reward being your very own ABD furniture item. That would make it so much more convenient to be able to place a ABD furniture item somewhere in your town, either outdoors, in your house or something, so then you could access your funds more frequently and not have to worry about running back into resident surfaces every time you run out of bells. Shifting focus a bit, let's talk custom designs. And I am over the fact that there are so little slots. There is, okay, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of slots for custom designs, but, but because of how many unique applications there are for using designs for like customizing furniture, town flag, placing paths on the ground, I'm already out of space. And my town isn't even close to being completed in its design. And the annoying part is if you make a second playable character, because then you can think, oh, we could use their design slots as well. Well, no, actually all player characters on the same island share the same custom designs, which is a really silly feature. And I couldn't imagine actually playing multiplayer like that, where 
I couldn't have my own designs and I'd have to share it with whoever I'm playing with. So I think a simple update would be either more slots for designs or at least make it so different other player characters on your island had their own design slots. So then if I wanted to like make paths, I could like sign on with another account, make my paths and then sign back to my main account and have a freed up room on my design storage. So let's talk terrain tools. First of all, the most important thing, we need more bridges and we need more staircases. The fact that it only limits you to eight is the most annoying thing. And there's so much more I would love to do with the varying terrains, but with the limiting factor of only eight, it's not enough. They need to at least bump it up to 10, maybe even 15. I don't want to go crazy and say unlimited because maybe that would cause performance issues because like too much stuff's on the island. But eight is just not enough. And speaking of terrain tools, let's talk about the Island Designer app. As many of you know, it is very tedious because when raising up terrain, breaking it down, making rivers or waterfalls, whatever, you have to go one tile at a time. And that's not even to mention that there's no really indication or cursor of what tile you're about to hit. So all my island designer sessions often result in many misinputs of me accidentally hitting the wrong place. Another annoyance is it always defaults to wanting to curve your rivers or curve the edges of your raised cliffs. When you're trying to destroy bigger mountains or cover up bigger areas of water, it is so annoying when so frequently you're just like, you have to hit the same tile twice to first curve it and then break it. Curve, break, curve, break. It'd be so much easier if maybe you like held like a trigger button and that would actually be the indication of, okay, this is now, I mean, the curving tool and this will actually add it a slant to the river or the mountain I'm working with. But honestly, I would almost go as even far as saying that it would be worth having a more easy to use terrain tool editor. It would be really nice to do like a top down, drag and drop like a bigger area you're trying to raise up and just make, make the overall process more convenient of making these terrain edits. But I do get it. It's kind of off brand from Animal Crossing to do something like this. This game is all about that slower pace stuff, manually placing stuff. But if we're even on that topic, look at the top down design function you have in your house. Happy Home Designer introduced a new way to design your homes where you can rotate furniture, drag it around your room. And it's a much more efficient process to making bigger designs for each of your rooms. It's a really convenient feature to make your design process a lot more smoothly. But if you go out in your town, you obviously, first of all, can't even use that tool on the outside. So you go back to the old days of just placing things manually. And the same carries over for using your terrain tool editing. So I'm kind of torn. I understand how revamping the terrain tools to be able to like drag and drop and like make, make large edits on a big scale would feel very off-brand Animal Crossing, but at the same time, in this same game, there's that top-down drag-and-drop thing that's in your home. I think it still could make sense for them to extend that to, to outside in your village, as well as to the terrain editing tools. Shifting focus a little bit, let's talk about shopping. In the Able Sisters, I love the new dressing room feature. It is such a convenient way to try out everything they have in store for the day, and you can make fun little outfits. But often, there are many different outfits that I wanna buy. So I have to go in, make a selection, come out, purchase it, go back in, make a selection, back and forth, back and forth. It'd be really nice to be able to like, select an outfit and just click on like, an add to cart option, where all of a sudden that whole outfit's been saved and put into your cart, and now you can create a new outfit and then select more clothing to be purchased in the same transaction. Also, the fact that if you want to have every single color of a certain outfit, you have to buy each individual color. I love the fact that there's so much customization in different colors of clothing, but it is kind of annoying that it's like, okay, if I want to buy this hoodie in blue, I also have to buy it in red and black and whatever other colors options there are, and it only makes it more inconvenient. You have to keep going in and out of the dressing room to keep buying each of the color clothing. It would be kind of nice if like you bought one and you just unlocked all the clothing colors in your like Nook shopping app, but I doubt it would be something that convenient. Jumping over to Nook's Cranny, the cabinet is another great convenient feature added to that shop. But it is kind of annoying when you want to buy bulks of flower packets, saplings, or more specifically customization boxes, your only option is to buy one or buy five. And when you're buying customization boxes, you never just want to get one or five, you're usually buying like tons, sometimes even like a full stack of 50. So it'd be so simple for them to add like a, how much do you want a quantity box where you just click a plus button to add up how many you want, or you can jump by stacks of 10, or even just like enter in how many you actually want. It would be such a small little feature, but both would make a lot of convenience to your shopping experience. So let's talk Dodo Airlines. When you're island hopping, jumping to a friend's island, or jumping on a random Dodo code to maybe sell your turnips, the dialogue tree that you have to go through is unnecessarily large. So an, an update I'd love to see is just a streamlined menu. When you meet Orville right at the counter, he just says, what do you want to do? And there's just a full list of a dump, bunch of different options you can go right off the bat. Maybe like Nook Miles ticket, play online, play local, visit via Dodo code, invite via Dodo code, open gate, Harv's Island, etc. down the row. So rather than going through a lengthy dialogue tree, 
you can just right there select exactly what you want. Another thing to mention is the loading times when you're bringing people onto your island or when they're leaving. I do understand like when you see like this person's coming to town and the cutscene is playing in the background of all that unnecessary animation, the game is probably loading and like getting things prepared and ready for like the merging of multiplayer. And so that's just a fun little way to like not just be a black screen and loading. So I understand that they couldn't cut something like that, but it would be great if they could streamline some of it. Like for example, when you open up your gate to like a bunch of friends, typically you're gonna have a lot of people jumping all at the same time to try to join your island. Or like if you're opening up a Dota code to like your three friends, you're gonna have to watch all three of your friends come in one at a time. It'd be kind of nice if you could like have them all join a lobby and all join in bulk all at the same time, you know? And the same goes for when people leave. Like, I don't need to see the cutscene of someone walking away every single time they leave. I don't need to see them walking away. So let's talk villagers moving out. And I know this is a big can of worms, but let's try to break this down slowly. First of all, it's already unnecessarily complex to actually get a villager to move out. And I don't expect that to ever be updated because that's just kind of Animal Crossing. That's just kind of what they do in this game. They always make it difficult for you to get the people out of your town that you want. There has been a lot of convenient features added, like the campsite as well as campsite villagers requesting, hey, maybe I'll kick this person out even if you have a max town. First of all, that's super annoying. It's like, okay, if you say no to who they want to kick out, they should just afterwards say, oh, who should I kick out instead? And then it'll show you a list of all your villagers, just like they do when you're selecting your villagers for when you're moving their home, and you just select the one you want, and boom, you already immediately move out the character you want. Building off that, when you have a villager moving on a friend's island and you want them to move to yours, but your spaces are filled up, it should have a similar mechanic to the campsite, where you talk to them and they say, oh, your town is full, you want me to kick out this person? And then you can say yes or no, but then if you said no, it'd be really great if they also, just like I just barely said, like, oh, who would you rather move out? And then you can select from your list and boom, you just go from there. So I'm not saying to entirely revamp the move in, move out process and, and actually be a way to indicate like how to get play characters to move out. But I think even those smaller things to streamline who moves out when you're trying to get a new character in could really make it a lot easier for players to get the characters they want in their towns. But that's all the smaller and quality of life updates I'd love to see to come to Animal Crossing New Horizons. Is there any other ideas you have for updates that you'd love to see in the game? Definitely let me know that in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big awesome like, and if you haven't already, definitely subscribe for tons more on Animal Crossing New Horizons. As a reminder, we stream every weekend, Saturday, Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, so definitely come on by, we have a lot of fun. Be sure to follow me over on Twitter and join our community Discord. It's a great place to find friends to play Animal Crossing with, trade items and turnips, and to keep up to date on everything we do with the channel. So thanks again guys so, so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!